I call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, February 13th of 2024. Uh, first up, we have messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board? Uh, just one from me. Uh, note for Adam and the board that I will be out of state for the next meeting. There is an outside chance I'll be able to uh, attend virtually, but uh, don't count on me being here. Thank you. Uh, next up is petitions and remonstrances. If anyone is here who would like to make a public comment about something that is not on the agenda this evening, now is the opportunity to do so. Uh, if you are joining us on Zoom and would like to make a public comment, you can either use the raised hand function or enter something into the chat to indicate that. Seeing none. Next is Title VI abatement, a request for abatement at 1919 North College. Recording in progress. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Rebecca Davis, Neighborhood Compliance Officer in the Hand Department. Um, I'm here to request uh, permission to abate the property uh, at 1919 North College. Uh, which is owned by Steak and Shake Operations. That's a uh, Steak and Shake that's been out of business for, uh, I think, a few years now. Um, anyhow, I began issuing notices of violation in November. Uh, I issued six of them uh, up until uh, February 1st was the last notice. Um, those were all mailed to the address that we have for Steak and Shake Operations in Houston, Texas. Um, we, I had uh, the, and that was for, uh, sorry, 606020. Uh, that's the trash, uh, collection of trash and rubbish, garbage. Um, I drove by today. Uh, the issue is still present, the garbage has not been cleaned up. Um, so yes, and so when we uh, decided to come to the Board of Public Works, uh, that request um, for abatement and a notice to let them know that we were going to request uh, abatement was sent via certified mail and also first class mail. Um, and we have not received any response or uh, indication we didn't get a receipt that they received the certified mail or not. Uh, so that's kind of where that's at right now. I'm sorry, you said you did or did not get a receipt? There has not been a receipt from the certified mail to say that it was received or signed for. All right. Uh, any questions from the board on this item? Not receiving a receipt, is that unusual? No. Okay. The, the mail tends to be fairly slow, and uh, sometimes when we get returned mail, it can be uh, a month or two later. Um, so things have been slow. I, mm -hmm. The other notices have not come back returned as undeliverable, though, is no, that correct? No, they have not. Chris Wheeler with City Legal. The, the point trying to be made there, uh, when doing a notice of abatement, our ordinance requires that we first send it, not necessarily first, but that we send it by certified mail. If we don't have proof that, that they actually received that by that return request receipt, we are authorized by the same ordinance to then use regular mail as our good service. What we can't do is just send it out regular mail and call that good. We have to send that certified mail first, or at least in tandem with. So what, what we do in hand is send both of them out at the same time. Uh, and if the certified mail comes back good, but if not, we have at least sent out that uh, regular mail as well. And none of the mailings that we sent out for all of those NOVs and for these two, for the notice of request to abate, none of those came back as undeliverable. So we think they're still operating in that same uh, office, but they just don't seem to be too interested in what we're doing up here. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions from the board? Are there any um, public comments on this item? 
Again, if you're on Zoom and would like to make a public comment, you can uh, use the raised hand function or enter something into the chat to indicate that. All right, seeing none, is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve the request for abatement at 1919 North College. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda, we have approval of minutes September 26th of 2023, approval of minutes October 10th of 2023, approval of minutes October 24th of 2023, approval of minutes November 8th of 2023, approval of minutes November 21st of 2023, resolution 2024-003, declaration of ITS surplus for recycling, Resolution 2024-004, Declaration of ITS Surplus for Donation. Resolution 2024-005, Declaration of ITS Surplus for Donation. Precision Concrete 2024 Service Agreement. Renewal number two with Groomer Construction for Sidewalk Assistance Program. Renewal number two with Groomer Construction for Sidewalk Services. And approval of payroll. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? Seeing none. Do we have any uh, public comment on anything within the consent agenda this evening? All right, seeing none, is there a motion on the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda for tonight's meeting of February 13th, 2024. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is new business. First under new business is lane and sidewalk closure requests from AEG. Hi, this is Alex Gray from engineering. Uh, so AEG is back with their kind of routine that we've had for the past year now. Uh, this time they have three project areas that they plan to bring forward to you. One of them is from a past um, that was supposed to go to a past meeting and then has been pulled because we were having conversations about um, conflicts with the uh, B-Line extension project. And then kind of a similar thing with Pine Street, um, which is the next one. We are also having um, can we continue um, conversations with them about the uh, Adam Street project that's the sidewalk closure that's supposed to happen. And so we just wanted to make sure that those were all ironed out and they are now. And so the uh, to make sure that it's known of kind of where these are. Crescent Road um, does not really include Crescent Road. It's kind of more that neighborhood area, but it is from West 17th Street to uh, Adams Street and then Highway 37 or I-69. And then it'll be uh, West Gray Street as well from the south up. I kind of did it a little bit backwards there. For North Pine Street, it is West Bloomfield Road to West 9th, and then South Landmark Avenue to Elm Street or South Walker. Um, and then that one, they have um, a note to make sure that they're in coordination with us when they move forward, just because there's gonna have a closure for a very long time and we don't wanna cause additional problems. So that's what the kind of the note there is. And then the final one is West Countryside Lane all the way um, up Rockport and then South Rogers toward Patterson Drive and Grimes and then over onto West Allen and Catalan area. Thank you. Uh, so for the benefit of those that may be watching for the very first time, so this is the fiber optic project and these are temporary uh, closures, is that correct? Yes. They go through in the neighborhood and they it's kind of like a rolling closure for lack of a better word. So you'll see them in like one section of the neighborhood and then they'll, maybe the next day they'll be a little bit further down and, and it kind of goes through that neighborhood. So it's not like they're closing the whole area for um, the four week period that we kind of estimate for each one. With the way they've done signage and directed traffic and things like that. If there is any trouble that comes up, we notify them and then they will go out there with their inspectors and get it fixed for us. So. James, I'll just note on, on with your question. So, um, the 
uh, land and sidewalk closure requests from AEG are part of the larger citywide fiber project that is um, part of the Hoosier Fiber Networks and the Gigabit Now project. Uh, we also have other fiber installers that often are coming to us for other lane and uh, sidewalk closure requests. That could be AT&T or any other number of fiber optic uh, providers. Any public comments on this item? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the lane and sidewalk closure request from AEG. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is lane and sidewalk closure re closures request from Lineal Contracting. Hi, it's Alex Gray from Engineering again. So just as Adam mentioned with the previous item, this is actually another fiber uh, group that's going through, but this one is actually AT&T, and it's an older project. This one was supposed to be in 2022, but they were unable to complete it at the time for one reason or another, um, and so it had to be delayed until now, so that way they are gonna reinstate the permit, so that way they can continue it and finish it out. Um, and this one is going to be um, South Rockport Road and then Rogers and then that kind of neighborhood area, the Stands neighborhood and then West Country Club. And they expect that to be um, the whole project, all, all of those areas to be 90 days. And so it won't be 90 days in one section and the 90s in another. It's gonna be some days here and then move on to the next one and so forth. Board. I'm just trying to find the specific um, permit for the or the request for the stands, only because I know that there is a lot of traffic on the stands drive um, with the middle school right there, and just making sure that there are enough signage and people are paying attention both to students walking and people driving to pick them up. That's totally fair. Yeah. And I had asked um, during the work session, just for clarification, um, I'm probably now so used to seeing the AEG maps that looking at these maps, it's a little bit more difficult to um, understand that the majority of the time these lines are running um, Par parallel mm -hmm. to the roadway, not necessarily in the roadway, but along the edge, they may have to cross um, mm -hmm. the roadway from time to time. But I just wanted to confirm that that's how these are, are being run as well, that they're being run mostly along the sides of the roadway with occasional crossings. Yeah, that's correct. That's how we've seen with most of the contractors, not just including lineal or AG. They try to follow within the um, tree plot as much as they can. That way they don't have to disturb sidewalks or anything of that nature. And then if they do have to cross, it will be underneath. Mm -hmm. um, I know it can be anywhere from a few feet to several feet deep just so they don't hit any utilities. I may have missed this, Alice. I'm sorry. Um, it doesn't look like there's specific request dates for the closures. I know that these are carried forward from 2022. Do you know about when these closures will happen when they plan for that 90 day stretch? I know they would like to start soon if they can. They didn't give me an exact date, but I imagine it would be pretty soon after approval. Any other questions from the board? Any public comment on this item? Nothing on this item. All right, seeing none, is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve 
the lane and sidewalk closures request from lineal contracting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next is sidewalk closure request on East 3rd Street from Strausser Construction. This is March 9th through March 16th of 2024. Hi, it's Alex Gray from Engineering again. So this one is for the loft and apartments that are over by the uh, College Mall Road and the bypass on our East 3rd Street. Um, so it's gonna be kind of on that west side of that intersection. And for this one, they just wanna do the sidewalk closure. That way they can work on the exterior of the building and also replace the sidewalk there. Questions from the board on this? We raised a question yesterday about access to the building in between the apartment site and the travel lodge location. With that sidewalk closed, just wanted to make sure that there's access to that drive in between. Were you able to confirm that, or is the petitioner on um, Zoom? It would be uh, either Will Morris or Ryan Strausser if they're on. Will, I'm going to ask uh, you to unmute. Uh, there's a question whether or not the, I think it's a spa or salon next door, uh, will have access. Is that right? Yeah, um, if you give me just a second, mm -hmm. um, I will look. I don't know if we're actually going all the way to that property. I believe we may be stopping at our east property line, which would be before that um, opening to, or, you know, drive to that, that uh, building. I, I will check right now. That would be 2613 East 3rd Street. That's the tandem. Oh, okay. Yeah, the birthing center. Yeah, so from what I can see here on our um, site improvement plan, we are stopping at our east property line, which would be between the two uh, addresses there. You just make sure to coordinate good with the property owner to the east there, or the, the, the uh, commercial um, uh, entity there to the east. To just make sure you're in good coordination with them on that. Yep, you can do that. Any other questions from the board? Any public comments on this item? All right. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the sidewalk closure request on East 3rd Street from Strasser Construction from March 9 to March 16, 2024. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is sidewalk closure and metered parking reservation request from Gillette General Contractors. It's February 14th through the 28th of 2024. Good evening, Adam Wason on behalf of Kyle Baugh with engineering. Uh, so Gillette is requesting daily intermittent sidewalk closures on the west side of South Grant, uh, along with uh, the metered parking reservation for three stalls there. Um, it's gonna, this is needed to accommodate some material deliveries for work occurring at 228 South Grant, and they'll make sure that they have appropriate uh, traffic plans in place. Um, Tom Rittman with Gillette is online, and otherwise we've reviewed everything, worked with transit, fire, police, and others to let them know of the work that will be occurring, and we are supportive of this request. Questions from the board on this item? Any public comments on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the sidewalk closure and metered parking reservation request from Gillette General Contractors from February 14 to 28, 2024. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next is lane closure request from City of Bloomington Utilities. 
Uh, once again, Adam Wason on behalf of Kyle Baugh. Um, so this is the City of Bloomington Utilities. They're going to be doing a two-week lane closure for a stormwater reconstruction project uh, next to 209 South College Avenue. So this is outside uh, in front of the Atlas Ballroom. Um, so they'll need the eastern lane and the sidewalks during normal work hours, uh, hoping to start on the 25th of March and be done by April 8th and they have submitted their maintenance of traffic plans and um, and have the city's support to complete the work. Thank you. Questions from the board on this item? I think during the work session, um, it was clarified that the, the um, work I know it says um, nor normal working hours. That's daytime working hours. Um, and then otherwise, it will be accessible. Uh, so I'm imagining Atlas has mostly evening hours. Yeah, they'll make sure to coordinate and get sidewalks open whenever available um, <clears throat> for, yes, they'll get things plated and the, uh, work with the commercial enterprise to make sure that they have their uh, needs met as well for deliveries, et cetera. Cool. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Any uh, public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the lane closure request from City of Bloomington Utilities. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is contract with Applied Engineering Services for Walnut and Morton Street garages. I'm Wason, Public Works Director. Um, this is on behalf of the parking garage staff and our parking garage manager, Jess Goodman. Um, so we are contracting with Applied Engineering for uh, professional services in regards to inspections and um, drawings for uh, both the Walnut and Morton Street parking garages. So um, as we uh, rebuilt the 4th Street parking garage and built the Trades District garage, we've made some strong commitments to make sure that we're keeping up with the maintenance on the other garages that we are uh, responsible for. So this is all part of that. Um, they'll do their inspections, give us listed projects in a priority order um, uh, for us to be completing at both garages. So. Um, Overall total cost of this contract is not to exceed 16000 and it's all part of our efforts um, to, we've got some additional 2024 one-time funding to make investments in those garages based on these reports. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Applied Engineering Services for Walnut and Morton Street garages. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next up is staff reports and other business. Me this evening want to start with just uh, uh, thank you to some public work staff for their recent efforts, um, kind of going above and beyond with some um, with some different cleanup projects and such. Um, so thanks to some of our staff down at the street division and over at sanitation. Uh, also want to highlight the great work that the Brighton B-Town crew continues to do as part of our beautification efforts and cleanup efforts, um, having anywhere from 14 to 18 individuals show up almost every day. Uh, to work on those crews uh, throughout the downtown and, and such. So uh, just a great partnership of supportive employment there with Centerstone. That's a win-win for the community all around. Uh, and then I just wanted to make a quick note on, um, you know, when we're in these meetings, we often have the team from engineering uh, presenting, I don't know, a majority of the items. Um, and uh, so just kind of uh, a couple things for the background for the board. Um, I meet with the uh, engineering team every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Um, and we go over, it's our permit and right-of-way discussion meeting. It's a weekly meeting because we have a lot going on uh, in that regard every single day of the week and across the community. Um, 
So <clears throat> partly uh, my comments are to be a shout out to that team for all their efforts, um, you know, with all of the projects going on across the community and them keeping track of them and making sure they're doing regular inspections to make sure that the contractors and developers are doing the things that uh, they say they're going to do as part of their approvals from the board. I um, uh, just want to thank Alex and Kyle and Andrew Seabor and the whole team over there for all of their efforts um, uh, in that regard because it's not easy to keep up with, but they uh, are doing a really great job with that. Um, uh, the second part of that to make note of is either at the next work session or uh, it'll probably be at the next work session, we're going to spend some time going over that flow chart we've been talking about with the Title 12 and how uh, right-of-way permits are approved, whether by the board or at a staff level, and some upcoming changes that we may ask about uh, for uh, the board's support on in a ordinance update here at some point. So uh, we'll do that either at the next work session or the work session in four weeks from now or so. So uh, working on that. And yeah, so just to say thanks to that, the, the staff in the engineering department as well. Thank you. All right, next up is approval of claims. Uh, do we have any questions on claims? I asked a question yesterday about one of the claims um, to Griffin Realty Holdings. Do you have? Yeah, so I did get some more information on that. Um, as you'll recall, Elizabeth, maybe Kyla, um, as your holdovers uh, of, of board membership, um, last fall there were some conversations about uh, the administration, the previous administration contracting with Griffin Realty for realty services at the current Bloomington Police Site on East 3rd Street. Uh, so after some back and forth with City Legal and others, um, uh, the uh, city um, and the city former city administration entered into a contract with Griffin Real Estate for real estate services there. Um, <clears throat> As part of that contract, they made some amendments towards the end of last year, um, knowing that, or uh, in regards to the uh, transition of administrations, and that the services that had been rendered uh, by Griffin Realty for that site could be billed back to the city on an hourly basis, not just a commission base on a sale. Um, so most real estate contracts talk about how. Uh, the real estate firms will be paid, you know, a commission based on sale, um, knowing that there had been work put into the project by Griffin Realty to market and uh, try to um, drum up some um, <clears throat> offers of uh, purchase for the site that required services to be rendered. Uh, that's what this represents. So this is an invoice that was submitted uh, by Griffin Real Estate for those hourly services um, since a sale was not actually executed. Um, and uh, both city legal, mayor's office, controller's office have been reviewing all the documents submitted um, for this and uh, find that they're contractually obligated to make the payment. And uh, so that's why that is in this claims packet. Is this the um, final payment? Yes, that's my understanding. This is uh, the all services rendered to this point. So this incorporates the hourly wage or the hourly rate that they charged after the contract was reamended. The contract was amended when it was apparent that services had been provided, but a sale was not going to be executed. Um, so they, there was discussion among City Legal, and I, I believe it was m between City Legal and uh, Griffin Real Estate and the administration uh, controller's office previous to say, hey, this is, it looks like this is changing course. It looks like we won't have a sale. We've rendered these services for marketing and such, and so they agreed that uh, it would be a fair way to compensate for the services provided. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on claims? All right. Any uh, public comment on claims? Do not see any online. All right. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve claims tonight in the amount of three million eight hundred forty-six thousand forty-one dollars and ninety-three cents. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. And if there is nothing else, then I will call for adjournment.